This is the Player 4 Podcast. Join us each week as we talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests from the Rooster Teeth community. Player 4 has entered the game. What's up, Internet people? It's time for the Player 4 Podcast this week. Hello. I am Tristan, a.k.a. Shagrazir, on the Rooster Teeth website. I am Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21. And I am, uh, oh my, I am Malachi, a.k.a. Super wow. Kula. He <laughs> forgot who he was. We have a special guest this week to replace Joseph, our other special guest. Matthew Anderson, a.k.a. Matt317, a.k.a. Not That Special. <laughs> Not that special. You're like Funhouse. You're not that special. Hashtag super special. Ha. Uh, yeah, I, I like how the simple, just a simple and screws Mal up so badly. Well, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about saying and, but then I was gonna be like, and with today we have a special guest. But then I kind of tripped over myself. Anyways, what are our topics for today? And I hate you, Tristan. No, you don't. You yes, love I do. No. No. No, after what you, you want, just you did wanna, with you the topics. Read our, you want to you, you wanna read the pew tax? Oh, God, no. It's too late now. Okay. You're the, committed. The, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not, not going to say, say how you want me to say it. No. No, gonna, no it's pew tax. You got this. The topics, yeah, a.k.a. the pew tax, for some reason, Tristan decided to make that. Uh, the first of all is Mal ate some pizza. Yeah, oh that God. that's how that's how crazy <laughs> this this week has been. One of the topics is Mal ate pizza. The second topic is Guardian applications for RTX Austin 2018 have opened up, and we're going to talk about that and our plans. Battlefront Two of the Star Wars saga. Uh, has been released, and there is a ton of backlash on it. We None of us have actually played it. We're only <laughs> going to discuss the backlash <laughs> of this. <it>, so <laughs> we can't actually fun. review it. Yeah. And, yeah, all of us kind of stayed away from it. And also, technically, finally, it hasn't been released either. So. Well, it's out, it was out at my target, so I figured it had released already because there were games already there. <laughs> For people Please. to buy, uh, and Matt has a has, he has bought a new house, so he's going to tell us about his house. All right. Uh, so first off, Mal ate pizza. It was delicious. It had pepperoni sausage on it, but I was also sad because it didn't have enough pepperoni. End, <laughs> end story. This is my favorite Putech ever. Oh my gosh! So you had pepperoni and sausage. Um, I, I I mean I prefer lots of meat on my pizza as well. I bet you do. I do. I hate pineapple pizza. Anyone who likes pineapple pizza, there's a special place in hell for you. Just like people who like crispy <laughs> bacon. I bet it's balmy all year round. Crispy bacon is <laughs> good. No, I like I like nice like chewy bacon. Like not not like the flimsy kind where, that you get like at restaurants, and it's just like you pick it up and it just like flops down and sags. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking about the bacon that's still like springy, but it has a chewy texture to it. That's the best kind of bacon. Oh my god! <laughs> what is this I want everyone to appreciate that we have turned the topic Malachi ate pizza into an actual discussion. Floppy bacon. <laughs> Floppy the, bacon. Floppy bacon. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Matt, tell us about your favorite pizza topics, quick. Uh, let's see. Let's see, pepperoni, bacon, uh, pineapple. I don't care. I like it. Uh, let's see, chicken. <laughs> Damn it! And Matt, also because. Oh wait, it gets better. Let's see, spinach, uh, dried sun dried tomatoes. Uh, let's see. Let's see, ham, Canadian bacon. Oh, and uh, because I. I like to lord this fact over people who don't really like it. I like anchovies. It's like my father. Ninja Turtles will, would not like you. Ah, I don't like get anchovies, didn't they? No, I thought they didn't like anchovies. I don't remember. It's been a long time. So, there you have it. The first Putak was, Malachi ate some pizza. You have been pizzaed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make Alex get this image that came to me on Discord a couple of weeks ago. Because, of course, the topic of pineapple pizza came up. And somebody shared an image of a pineapple cut in half with little tiny pizzas spread on it. <laughs> <laughs> what say you to that? Uh, I, 
I don't care for pineapple at all, so it really I think doesn't. Pineapple matter. is delicious. I'm not. I don't think. I think that special circumstances allow it to be on a pizza. Um, but most of the time, I don't want that kind of sweetness on my pizza. But I love pineapples. That's the thing. I don't want my pizza to be sweet. I when I have a pizza, I'm thinking just savory. I that that's what I that's what I see as a pizza. And that's what I want to taste as a pizza. I don't want sweet stuff. Savory is no longer one of the flavors. It's now called umami, apparently. Umami. Which means, yeah. which means savory. <laughs> don't worry, Tristan. It's all ooh-goo. Oh, yeah. All right, next topic. <laughs> what's, the, what's the next Putech? Guardian applications for I RTX. I Guardian. Applicated. I applicated my Guardian. You applicated, and then I pl- applicated after you because I took a little longer because... I, I don't know. I I have time. I, I, I have a little difficulty because I want to say exactly what I want to say, and I always have to think through things, so it took me longer. I, I, I honestly, like, all those things where it was like, what would make you a good Guardian? I was like, Mary, I've been a Guardian three years running. If I wasn't a good Guardian, you wouldn't have picked me. <laughs> and that's why you're not going to get chosen. It's possible. I might. Uh, I doubt it, though. I mean, they... <laughs> She has said that she's like, this counts, so if you've been a Guardian at RTX before, put it on here, well, yeah, <laughs> and I let did us that. know what your responsibilities were. <laughs> so I, told, I, I said what my responsibilities were, but I mean, it's just like, you know, what makes you a good pick? It's like, because I've done it before, three years running. <laughs> so you applied for tech, and what else? I don't remember. <laughs> tech in some other position, apparently. Tech is something else that I, I think I picked center stage because that's also because a pretty tech position. You figure that you're just going to get tech anyways because you've done such that. a good job. Why would they pull you away from that? It's his favorite <laughs> um, position. I. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, that was innuendo. I'm good. Okay. Um. I went for response again and expo, and of course I put in the option to uh, for PA as well. Um, like I every, like no. like the other five hundred people other than Tristan. Yeah, <laughs> I said no on on PA. I'm like, uh, they're going to get enough other responses, and I really don't want that responsibility. I don't. I don't think I'd mind it, and I think that that's that's where I would excel the most, but. <clears throat> response is still good because you get to pretty much go everywhere and expo i love so, the expo hall so much it's always crazy so that's another good spot so lines is just a thing of the past huh uh, i mean response is technically lines but i mean we do more than just lines too yeah i'm just saying that like lines team past yes lines is a, is a is a thing of the past that happened last uh last year at rtx which originally I applied for lines and then it got changed to response. Interesting. Or it merged into response because response already exists. Yeah, it it merged into response because to be fair, they did almost exactly the same things. Okay. So, Matt, what's your experience of RTX? Uh, Let's see. A little more specific, like what specific like aspect like, no, uh, not, yeah what 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 when you go to rtx are you an attendee or a guardian oh attendee would you ever be a guardian uh also i could but i, I can't i can't really commit the uh, whole the uh, extra days out of my uh, out of my work schedule and uh, vacation time so, for, so like, like the that. wednesday and the, the thursday well, like... I, I usually set aside thursday friday and Monday, which when I head back, but uh, super, even then, I guess it's kind of a special uh, time. Well, I guess when you put it that way, yeah, even then, that's uh, kind of a. Uh, I, mean, it's not, not, I guess it's not really my. I wouldn't be suited for it. It's just I guess I kind of want to go on vacation that week for a weekend. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Some people all like. I consider this my vacation too, and it's kind of ironic because I'm I'm working on it. But to me, it's doesn't feel like work it just feels like hanging out with friends and telling them why where to go <laughs> oh yeah yeah no I, I feel the same way I, I don't get vacation time though i just lose all those days of work completely outright no money well that's because you're on contract yeah. right not because you're an like an actual employee all right 
Yeah, well, like I could, like I, I need to take more vacations because I have vacation time. But that, to me, RTX is my true, real vacation every year. Oh yeah, <sighs> a week. Uh, but Guardian applications are open until January third, I believe. I saw on the form. That sounds so correct. There's plenty of time for people to sign up. I was surprised at how long that they gave, considering they're like, yeah, we're getting a head start on it so that we can get a head start on Guardian. So I'm just like... That that head like start a head start if the closing date is the same as it was before. Yeah, you don't get to start really like choosing and looking at stuff until after January 3rd then. Unless you start early, you start looking through the ones that have already submitted, which is certainly possible. Uh, but I encourage anyone who wants to, to apply, and even the ones that didn't make it in past years, keep applying. The show gets bigger every year and needs more Guardians each year. Yes, I don't think they really grew it too much the past couple of years, but... It grew exponentially the first couple we were there. Yeah. Uh, now they kind of, they hover around like 500 to 500 plus Mm. uh, Guardians, it seems like. Mm. Five to six hundred. Yeah, somewhere between that. Yeah, I think they anyway. So, Guardian applications. Thank you for that, Putak. Yeah. Uh Star Wars Battlefront two. Star Wars Battlefront two. I'm looking Google. at it here. <laughs> Who so, was excited for that? Raise their hand. Um, um Chirp Chirp Kind I was kind of when we were we planning on it. Maybe just I was just kind of waiting and see, the, especially after the uh, kind of lukewarm reception the first one got. And uh looks like oh, my uh, wait, waiting and seeing is kind of paying off because apparently uh, with some of the stories I'm reading, people are really are not happy with it and uh, might just wait on it, if at all. Yeah, uh, I was disappointed with the first one. I never bought it, but I tried it out uh, at my friends and we were both disappointed in it. So I was not excited for the second one, and I am glad I really wasn't paying attention to it at all. It wasn't on my radar because of the stuff that I've heard so far. I I never... I think I've seen some of the, the trailers when they're teasing uh, Battlefront 2, but um, if I'm thinking of the right one, but I only got to play Battlefront 1 through uh, just playing with a friend, and I actually had quite a bit of fun with it, because it was always a gamble who would end up getting, like, the Jedi, because it's the one where it's a first part year, it's a shooter game, but like, um, if you respawn after death, you have a chance to, I don't know if it was specific, what do you have a chance to respawn as a Jedi and just go nuts? At, like, yeah, uh, the second one I know, I love I love the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, I don't think I ever played the first one. The second one was really good, though, and I loved playing against the bots in the original second one. Um, I don't know. The first one felt too battlefieldy to me. Like it, it felt oh, like it was just like it, yeah, it was basically battle for, battlefield with Star Wars skins. Hmm. Right. I mean, I don't see how that's not going to still be kind of the case because it looks to me like Dice, the guys who made Battlefield Four, are the main primary developers for this game. Yeah, correct. Uh, I'm seeing a release date of the 17th, which is in two days. Which is still funny. Like I said, I was looking, I don't know, maybe... You can pre-order. Some... Well, the thing was, when I, because, okay, so I, I work at, at, at a Target, and I went through, I went by my games uh, area, and literally on one of the end caps, they had the... Um, one of like the special editions for both the PS4 and the Xbox, uh, the special edition versions of the game sitting out like copies in the stuff, like in the, the locked up. I'm just like, what? It's out already. I, I, <laughs> when did this happen? So you sure I don't know someone, what's going on. <laughs> you sure someone didn't goof? And, Cause <laughs> okay. usually stores get it ahead of time. But... Uh, some, yeah, well, they get, they get it a few days in advance of actually having to sell it. But no, here's the, <laughs> Here's, I was reading an article um, just to try and understand what the a lot of the contempt uh, that we were seeing online was about, and it looks to me like a lot of games have either unlockable content um, or or DLC content, and competitive games will often have um, optional cosmetic stuff or microtransactions. 
Uh, in this what, case, what, which, which article are you reading? Because um, I have an article up as well. I'm reading. I'm looking at a Polygon right now. Uh, I'm reading a Forbes one, okay, but it's saying fine. the exact same thing. Right. I'm thinking uh, that's. I think that's the major. I think that's the meat of it. Is that um, there is a lot of unlockables in the game, but people are worried that they've artificially slowed your ability to get unlockables in order to push people toward the microtransactions to right. unlock the things they want. That, that's uh, part of it. Yeah. That and coupled with a uh, fairly a loot box system. Yeah, so I was yeah. just uh, looking yeah. at a paragraph on that, uh, which this appears to be a quote from one of the uh, one of the creators during an AMA. <laughs> or or no, uh, a, a, this is a quote from a member of a fan site for um, the Old Republic Strategies. It says, there's a grand total of 324 cards uh, which are unlockable in the game. Upgrading these will require a, t- grant, uh, will require a total of 155,520 crafting pieces. Uh, this requires opening a minimum of 3,111 loot crates, which will require a minimum of 4,524... 28 hours of gameplay. <laughs> 4,528 hours of gameplay to unlock the minimum number of loot crates to unlock to get all the pieces you need to upgrade all the things. But, but. You, you can uh, kind of bypass that amount of time and pay for the micro, pay with them with microtransactions. No we. However, to pay when you pay for those micro for those loot boxes for those microtransactions, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get stuff. So, in a sense, what I'm reading from this from the article that I'm reading from Forbes is that there's almost a quasi gambling sense with the loot boxes in this oh, game. No. Yep. <laughs> You're putting in money in the hopes of getting the stuff that you want. And this stuff also makes your stuff better. So essentially, you're paying to win. To win when you already pay. Like, this is uh, like, it's okay for like a free to play game to be like, here you go. Here's some stuff to get to make you better, essentially. Because everybody can get in for free. You don't have to do anything. But when you already paid for the game and you're getting screwed over because other people are paying to make their stuff better, and and it's a competitive game, yeah, then it's that just that that is completely wrong in in my opinion. Yeah, oh, I hear you. That's why I've been proud of the um the games that are free to play and have microtransactions, but only for stuff that doesn't make you more competitive. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's at least one thing that Call of Duty didn't do is they didn't make it so that you could get better stuff with your right. with 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 buying stuff. All it is is cosmetic stuff. Yeah, which most well, most companies do steer clear away from that. They're like, okay, we're only gonna do cosmetic stuff if you want to make your person look differently or have a different symbol. Yeah, we'll allow you to do that, but we're not going to let you get better from it. I think I think enough other companies got burned over the past ten years. <laughs> but apparently, they weren't thinking <laughs> about not that enough. With other with companies. Star Wars. <laughs> oh wow! I didn't know this uh, article actually has some. Um, it refers to Angry Joe. I didn't even know that he was. Uh, I didn't know he was still making videos. Still a thing. Oh, he still is. I just yeah. don't really pay attention to him much. Yeah, I used to watch him a lot. But you've got the the whole thing with the gambling when you have kids playing this. Yeah. And then that's a whole new can of worms. Yeah, it's teaching them bad habits. Yeah. If you pay money, you might get a thing you want. Yeah, it's not even their money. That they and if you don't, for. yeah, if you don't, put in some more money and try to get it again. Yeah. Mm, I see a lot of interesting things in the field of gaming from this point on. Whether this will... I guess it's already starting a conversation regarding I guess the ethics involving loot boxes yeah. and uh, being a soft form of gambling. I mean, yes. And and they're they're actually rather prevalent in gaming. There's a lot, especially if you look at, like, the phone games and any of that um, real uh, 
mainstream kind of uh what would you say yeah i guess just mainstream gaming just uh um, little little phone games and things that anybody you know your mom your aunt your dog can pick up and start playing there's a lot of stuff in there that's like oh hey throw in some money and get some cool stuff maybe (laughs) actually Hmm, maybe that's one that we actually do just (laughs) don't talk to me (laughs) yes you, you play the love live I believe yeah. games, and but, I play I play the Yu Gi Oh. Uh, what, what is nice uh, is phone game, you, and it has the same thing. Yeah. What is nice though is you do get to earn the currency used to do the gambling part oh, in game. You do not solely only. Yeah, well, you're yeah, not it's, required it's to the spend the for, money, yeah. it, but you it's, can. <laughs> most yeah. phone games do that, where yeah. you like they have a certain currency, like the Yu Gi Oh one. I do. Uh, I have gems. And you can earn them by completing tasks uh, every day and so forth. Or you can end up spending money to get gems and buy packs. Yep. For those impatient uh, among us, which is uh, a lot of people, myself, I've been impatient in the past. Yes. Enough people that will make a pro- definitely make a huge profit. Right, right. You uh, you end up outweighing, oh. you know, your expense. You, you, you go over and above your expenditure on the game with the profits from just the 10%, 20% of your user base that takes advantage of the spend a little money to get a little edge. Um, there's one game that it's not gambling, but it's kind of scary at how much money it is. Uh, <laughs> I think I know where you're going. Yeah, Warframe has the Prime Access Packs, which... Ugh. Which are what 120 Tristan sometimes 150 dollars. They're more than a game, and you're just getting a little bit of content within a game. It's so ridiculous, and people buy them. Yeah, you get you get uh, a frame usually, and a couple weapons that you can earn in the game for and free. And you get a couple cosmetics that you can't earn. You actually the only way to get them is through that. So they do have some exclusive stuff. But it's the fact that the core of it you er- you can earn in the game, and it's it's hundreds of dollars. It's it's just insane. You know, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, putting this in perspective makes me realize kind of realize how uh, that like earlier this month, how the uh, Star Wars game that Visceral was working on got essentially got canceled. It's, it might just be that pretty much canceled because, well, like have, having a uh, single player story driven game, I guess in the eyes of so, a company like EA, must not obviously make enough money. Well, it must make, definitely does make money, but de- definitely not as much comparatively toward, in regard, in comparison to something like this, apparently, because... I, d- I did hear about that, how la- there's there, there were speculations that it was cancelled because EA felt that it wasn't going to make enough money because you can't really do microtransactions in a single Oh, it could definitely game. make it could definitely make money, just not as this much is, money yeah. as this this can though. Which kind of brings into question uh just the future of Star Wars games in general. Like will it only like ever since let's see, EA has gotten uh, control of Star Wars games, if there hasn't really been much comparatively other than let's see Battlefront, a few mobile games. Nothing compared to how it was in, say, like like the early 2000s, which, granted, they weren't, not all of them were great, but there was at least some kind of, like, variation. You know, some single-player, like, action games, some shooter, online shooters, some racing games, and, you know, LucasArts seemed to be, oh, and flight sim, simulators. LucasArts seemed to be pranking them out. Well, I mean, you have to figure that that was essentially LucasArts niche right there was the Star Wars games because it's LucasArts with EA. They have so many different genres and titles that they can't they're not really going to focus a whole ton of like resources on Star Wars game after Star Wars game. Huh. So sadly, yes, but even then I go, like I guess are we, from this point are we just going to expect like uh let's see pay to win let's see games as service style uh multiplayer shooters for uh star for star wars games in the future from now on or will we still get any kind of like good like uh single player games or even anything that ties into any of the new movies or any anything like it just that nothing seems certain anymore and it's kind of just kind of sad 
Well, if it doesn't succeed, the something else might be addressed, and hopefully you'll see something. Oh, yeah. I've, I hope so. <sighs> All right. Are we ready to move on to the next thing? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Final topic. Putax. <laughs> I got you to say it. No, he can edit it out. <laughs> so, Matt, you, I recall you recently uh, talking on RT uh, about getting a house. What happened? Oh, yeah. I just bought, I recently bought a new house about a month or two ago. Actually, a month and a half ago. Is and it just you living there? No, I have two friends like, who are roommates who are helping me helping, uh, pay, pay rent. Well, actually, uh, I own the house, and they essentially uh, room with me, and they pay me rent. And help that helps go into my mortgage, and they help out on the house as well. And we're all good friends here too. It's not a bad thing for you, as long as like if they ever had to leave or decided to leave, that you could still cover everything. Oh yeah, and even then, I have a bunch of other uh, like uh, fr- friends that want like I live live by the uh, university where I where I work work at, mm-hmm. and uh, I have a lot of friends that are going to college, and they like have. I mean, a good place that's close and with che- cheap rent compared to the uh, student housing. Oh, I and this is actually a much be- better deal compared compared to so- some of those options. And they're, it's actually it's been very good in that regard. Oh, that's cool. And of course, it's only with like people like friends I really trust, of course. And yeah. they they really like it, like it. It's, let's see. Uh, on that, I guess what what do you want to add on to that? What kind of house is it? How big? Oh, just like a. Like thirteen hundred square feet, uh, th- three bedroom, two bathroom. Let's see, a detached garage. How big's your kitchen? Uh, probably just a just kind of average size. Is it a ranch style? Uh, clarify, ranch style. Uh, ranch, style ranch style, one story. Yeah, with yeah one story. Okay. Uh, and they're basically linear, where the front door opens in between the living room and the bedrooms are separated by the entryway. Yes. Usually the living room is on the same side of the house as the kitchen. Oh, yes. And another good thing, interesting feature about the house is that it has a back, has a living room in the front, but also a second living room and that's the kitchen where it's essentially like a den where I've essentially turned it into my uh, entertainment room slash, let's see, office. So you, you know, where I've, your personal space. Yes. You know, I've uh, set up all my game systems, shelves, games, books, and I'm rec- talking to you from the, from that room right now. Very nice. Yeah, and I'm hoping this will be a good like place in the future to also like do uh, let's see production work regarding uh, streaming and oh I'll get some streams from Matt three one seven. Yeah, ho- hopefully I'm hoping to get that off. Off I had to put that on hold and I still try try get get into that again. Did you have a warming uh, party? Oh yeah, which is also it was a warming party and also. Like a ha- Halloween party where everyone show up in costume. Nice, nice. Oh yeah, it was a really good turnout, and uh, people, so- my friends, really seemed to like this house too. And on that, you know, just been kind of busy, just kind of getting settled in this house, so I haven't had much time to like play gay, play much games in that regard. And let's see. Oh, another interesting thing about it was uh, I was actually supposed to close on this house right. When Hurricane Harvey hit the Texas coast. Oh man! Yeah, and also, thankfully they, uh, the title company uh, suspended like the closing. But even then, I was we were pretty worried. But thankfully, like it made only m- minimal damage, and I've since fixed it all. Which very grateful that you know Harvey uh, didn't hit ten miles to the south of where the eye hit. But even then, ah. Uh, Still kind of depressing to think about yeah. some of the damage. Of course. But even the, then, things have, things have gotten better in that regard, but I'm still helping out whenever I can. Good stuff. Yeah. That's good of you to do. Yeah. And let's go on that. Time to get the flip out of here? Yes. Well, no. No, no, not like that. <laughs> I mean, we, could, we could talk some, talk for like hours. Yeah, we could. Really we could, hours. but that would be a very long podcast episode. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone. It's been a wonderful adventure with you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, thanks. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Glad, glad we could uh, had a lot more to talk about than we thought. <laughs> glad you would join us. Thank you for coming thanks. on and being a guest. Hi, well, Thank you. You guys have a good night. You too. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. I'm waiting. Hashtag goodbye.
Goodbye. <laughs> Alex, Kristen, I'll you know waiting. that that's my cue. <laughs> I like making you wait. <laughs> I always like it. I always like hearing, hearing Alex end the podcast like that. Oh, uh, thanks. Goodbye. You like my caboo, my caboo spot. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> I miss and another thing. Another thing. Another thing. It, it was. It had its run, Tristan. I know. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough each time for and another thing. I miss running Dookie. Running Dookie. I mean, that could always be Dookie brought back. The grave. Ugh. Everything could be brought back with us. Yeah, we don't let things die. Just like <laughs> Dookie <we're spectacular. laughs> Dookie spree. Dookie Manjaro. <laughs> Poof.